In 1698, a small group of Catholic missionaries gathered on the banks of the Mississippi River, not far from here. Their journey had been long and difficult. They gathered on that winter's day to give thanks and praise to God and to celebrate the first Mass on these shores. Without realizing it, that band of immigrants laid the cornerstone for the city we now call St. Louis, a city rooted in the faith of those first Catholic missionaries. Now, 300 years later, the Catholic faithful are gathering again on the banks of the mighty Mississippi River. Preparations have been ongoing for more than six months. Tens of thousands turned out in unseasonably mild temperatures. God had heard and answered the prayers for good weather by the faithful St. Louis community of believers. The people of God are gathering this time to raise their voices in song and prayer and to celebrate the gospel of Christ with a man called John Paul, the spiritual leader of more than a billion Catholics worldwide. Pope John Paul II, the Vicar of Christ, the 263rd man to follow in the shoes of a fisherman named Peter, the man on whom Jesus said he would build his church. At the invitation of his close and longtime personal friend, St. Louis Archbishop Justin Regali, the Pope came to St. Louis and would spend 32 hours in the city known as the Gateway to the West. It would be a pastoral visit where the Holy Father would call all of us to be one, united in the church that Jesus Christ himself began 2,000 years ago. Here in the heartland of America, followers of Jesus Christ embrace the Holy Father's message of peace and reconciliation, walking in the light, crying the gospel with their lives, standing at the gateway to our faith. On January 26, 1999, thousands of young people gathered in St. Louis for an all-day celebration of their baptismal call to encounter Christ. The air was electric with prayerful energy as they joined the mile-long Walk in the Light from the Gateway Arch to the Papal Plaza and the Kiel Center, where later this same evening, Pope John Paul would lead a prayer service with 20,000 teenagers and young adults. excited to see our Holy right. Father. This is a spiritual high. This is great. Right now, this is one of the best feelings I've ever had about my faith. It's been totally rejuvenating, just totally awesome, just a total jump start in like, my faith. It just, I mean, it sets my heart on fire, it really does. I just, I mean, I love the Lord and I want to do all I can for Him. I think that this just shows the unity of the church, like seeing everybody coming together to see the Vicar of Christ. That's right. It's just really awesome. Yeah. All the unity. John Paul II, we love you. 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 These young, modern day pilgrims came by car, bus, train, and plane from as far away as South Dakota, Minnesota, and Connecticut. They traveled from Kentucky, Wisconsin, Texas, Pennsylvania, Kansas, Arkansas, Iowa, New York. As they waited, they prayed, witnessed, and reached out to each other. Um, 
just to be a part of this group when we see our Holy Father and to give thanks and praise to God for all his many good gifts to us. Inside the Kiel Center, 20,000 youth spent the day praying and praising God, all in anticipation of the Holy Father's appearance. They waited with song and dance, with joy and commitment. While the youth celebrated their faith in downtown St. Louis, the Pope was arriving on Shepherd One from Mexico City, where he had spent the previous four days. For many of these young people, daily prayer, the rosary, and scripture readings are part of their everyday life. The same is true of Pope John Paul II, who grew up in a devoutly Catholic family in Wadowice, Poland. The formation of Karol Josef Otiwa as a deeply religious youth and his spiritual journey to follow Christ are credited to the example of his parents and their Christ-centered family life. Fittingly, his first pastoral visit to St. Louis began with a warm welcome from President and Mrs. Clinton and some 500 families who had waited and prayed together for hours. The atmosphere was festive and prayerful, as Pope John Paul II, the most traveled pontiff in history, set foot on U.S. soil. We greet you and we thank you. For 20 years, you have lifted our spirits and touched our hearts. For 20 years. For 20 years, you have challenged us to think of life not in terms of what we acquire for ourselves, but in terms of what we give of ourselves. This is your seventh visit to the United States. Your 85th visit abroad as the Bishop of Rome. Through it all, you have given of yourself with a boundless physical energy which can only find its source in limitless faith. Our beloved Holy Father, a shepherd caring for his flock, bringing a message of peace, of unity, of love. Now I'm happy to be able to bring this message to Mid-America, on the banks of the Mississippi. In this historic city of St. Louis, the gateway to the West. As history is retold, the name of St. Louis will be forever linked to the first transatlantic light. 
and to the immense human endeavor and dealing behind, behind the name the spirit of St. Louis. Four families from St. Louis area parishes presented gifts to Pope John Paul. They represented the prayer and good works of all families of our archdiocese as they joined together to promote unity and charity in their homes, in the church, and in society. The Holy Father reminds us that the family is the central unit of society, the very heart of the church. Parents must be examples of Christian love, of openness and understanding in their homes and in the world. By nurturing the values of selflessness, social justice, and forgiveness, parents teach their children to value human life and to live together in harmony. Families reach out to those in need. They celebrate the family as a place where faith is nurtured. Through family prayer, priestly and religious vocations will be strengthened and increase. Families must be committed to the culture of life, to respecting and protecting the rights and dignity of all human life. On the streets of St. Louis, crowds had been gathering for hours, ready to greet the man affectionately called El Papa. Parishes throughout the archdiocese rang their church bells to welcome Pope John Paul. This first of three parades ended at the archbishop's home. This is the America Center, a massive convention center where more than 100,000 worshipers, including 2,000 volunteers, 1,000 priests, and 250 cardinals, archbishops, and bishops are expected for the Papal Mass, now less than 20 hours away. Transforming the Trans World Dome and its football field, as well as the adjoining Cervantes Convention Center into an arena for the Papal Mass is a monumental task. Construction crews expect to work up to the last minute. High school and college age youth have been arriving since early morning. All of them were anxious to see Pope John Paul and to hear his message. Everywhere the Pope travels, he is cheered by the youth. As Pope John Paul knows, these young people are the future of the church, the light of the world. After a short trip in the Pope Mobile, the Holy Father arrived at the Kiel Center for his evening prayer service. Before entering the main arena, he met briefly with Cardinal Home Run King, Mark McGuire.
and then it was through a curtain onto the main floor, and a welcome perhaps unparalleled in St. Louis. His once strong athletic body is now more fragile. The man these young people call JP2 moves more slowly and with greater difficulty these days. Yet he seems rejuvenated in the presence of youth. He is strengthened by their eagerness to walk in faith and to share the light of Christ with all people. Father, after your wonderful visit to Mexico, it is with it is with it is with great joy that we welcome you today this evening to St. Louis. All these young people inside this Kiel Center and outside in the Papal Plaza want to tell you how happy they are to be with you. They, they know also, Holy Father, that when you come, you never come alone. You come with Christ. You bring. You bring our Lord Jesus Christ into our midst. You bring his message, you proclaim his gospel, you communicate his encouragement and his challenge, 
you make present his love. The young people of St. Louis and throughout the United States are asking you for this. Their hearts are open to you and to Christ. They are filled with hope as they welcome you with enthusiasm and great love. Holy Father, Holy Father, thank you for coming to St. Louis. Tonight, the Pope belongs to you. Train yourself for the boss. I'm told that. There was much excitement in St. Louis during the recent baseball season when two great players, Mark McGuire and Sammy Souza. We are competing to break the home run record. You can feel the same great enthusiasm as you train for a different goal. The goal of following Christ, the goal of bringing his message to the world. The Pope's message was a challenging one. Make your faith the biggest part of your life. Attend church on a regular basis and always follow the Lord Jesus, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. St. Matthew writes, You are the light of the world. Your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. Pope John Paul II is their spiritual leader the man whose life is their example for living the gospel of Christ. He calls young people to live lives of service. He challenges them to build a world of love, social justice, and peace. As a young priest in his native Poland, Father Karol Wojtyla set an example through his ministry to the poor. He reminds us that we have a primary responsibility as Christians to help those in need. John Paul's papacy is a living testimony of his love and concern for the unborn, the downtrodden, victims of poverty, 
war, and injustice. As the Apostle of Jesus Christ, he is the world's champion of humanitarian service in the Lord. Young people have always had a very special place in the heart of this Pope. Beginning in 1985 and every other year since, Pope John Paul invites them to join him for the celebration of World Youth Day. He speaks with young people frequently, encouraging them to live the gospel and reach out in the spirit of evangelization to their peers. While the evening was one centered on teenagers and young adults, it ended with a special prayer for the children at Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital, a touching and moving moment in an evening filled with special times. The two hours Pope John Paul would spend with these 20,000 young people will have a profound impact. Make all your spirit you know, just kick in. It was awesome. It was great. It was the coolest thing it was in the whole world. I mean, it, was like, it was like so emotional and everybody was just you know, overcome by everything. It was incredible. <laughs> it was the most amazing feeling I have ever truly had up to this time in my life. It was it's amazing. Oh, it's just been great. I mean, I mean, Jesus put it all together for us that we could come down here and get to see the Pope. I mean, it's great. I mean, God is so good. He really is. The Papal Mass is now only 11 hours away. The work of transforming a football stadium and exhibition halls into a place of worship, a cathedral for a day, continued long into the night. One, two, three. It is just one piece of the enormous challenge St. Louis faced in preparation for the Pope's pastoral visit to this community of more than a half million Roman Catholics. 
The work at the America Center would continue throughout the night and well into the morning hours. The first volunteer workers arrived at 1 a.m. Papal ushers, bus greeters, communion umbrella ushers, followed by banner carriers, choirs, and musicians. Soon the cardinals, bishops, priests, deacons, readers, and mass servers will also be here. The papal mass is less than six hours away. Perhaps the biggest challenge, moving 100,000 people into the America Center for the beginning of Mass. I pointed out somebody to my mom and I said, Mom, go up and you know ask her if she has a ticket. So my mom thought we'd change her approach. And she went up and said, can you make a miracle happen for me? And she said the woman just was kind of stunned and looked at her and my mom said, I really need two tickets. And she opened up an envelope and pulled out two tickets and said, well, they're not together, and gave them to us. So isn't that great? We had to get up really early, but I'm really glad that we're, we have the opportunity to come here and see the Pope. It's a really great religious experience. I'm very excited to see him. We're all very happy to be here, and we're looking forward to seeing the Pope. We've been, uh, been uh, preparing for this since one o'clock this morning, but the time's going by pretty fast, and we're enjoying everything and the, and the people around, and the excitement is kind of building, and it's going to be really nice once it starts, you know. <laughs> Just like yesterday too, when we seen the Pope for the first time, it was just it gives you goosebumps just seeing him. It's just unbelievable. I mean, just it's a weird feeling just watching for that few seconds. And today, now we'll get down here and get to see him the whole day. So that'll be a pretty interesting time. It would take 650 bus trips in just over three hours. For many, this was a pilgrimage, a four to five hour trek from the time they left home until they finally found their seats. All for this once-in-a-lifetime privilege to celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass with the Holy Father. Pilgrims to the Papal Mass were called to morning prayer in the traditional way of their ancestors, the blowing of the shofar. The trumpet, made of a ram's horn, is still used by Jewish congregations today to call people to prayer on the most solemn of religious holy days. Here in this city of immigrants, St. Louis, Missouri, in the heart of the Midwest, the nickname Gateway to the West means many things. It is a symbol of opportunity for refugees seeking a new life. It was the departure point for many early settlers traveling to the unknown western frontiers of North America. St. Louis is at the heart of the Catholic Church in the United States. Countless dioceses west of the Mississippi River have their roots in St. Louis. St. Louis would become known as the Rome of the West, and from here the church spread and flourished. Let's have a communal love-in right here. Let's love the Lord right here. Today, St. Louis is a gathering place for Catholics and Christians of many faiths to celebrate together Christ's presence in their lives. Today, it is a global stage on which interfaith communication and dialogue are in the spotlight. St. Louis, now in many ways, the gateway to ecumenical understanding. Let us just calm ourselves now let us bow our heads and let us put ourselves in a posture of prayer. Morning and evening prayer are ancient traditions of the universal church. 
They sanctify the day from dawn to sunset. Morning prayer calls us to focus our mind and our will on the ways of God. At this early hour, we celebrate the light of a new day and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As the morning prayer concluded at the America Center, Pope John Paul would begin his day at the Archbishop's residence. In the Catholic Church, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our faith. We believe the Eucharist is truly the presence of Jesus Christ among us under the appearance of bread and wine, and the memorial of his sacrifice for our redemption. Today, Pope John Paul celebrates the Mass of the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It is a celebration of the mercy of God. For months, we have been praying in a very special way for two intentions, for the health and well-being of Your Holiness and for good weather. God has brought you here, and we believe that our prayers are answered on this beautiful day. sacred to the Lord your God. Yes. Love one another because love is of God.
There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need to repent. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, children, parents must know that they are fully supported by the church and by society. The new evangelization must bring a fuller appreciation of the family as the primary and most vital foundation of society, the first school of social virtue and solidarity. As the family goes, so goes the nation. How can we fail to see, how can we fail to see that abortion, euthanasia, and assisted suicide are a terrible rejection of God's gift of life and love? The new evangelization calls for followers of Christ who are unconditionally pro-life. who will proclaim, celebrate, and serve the gospel of life in every situation. A sign of hope is the increasing recognition that the dignity of human life must never be taken away, even in the case of someone, someone who has done great evil. As the new millennium approaches, there remains another great challenge facing this community of St. Louis, east and west of the Mississippi, and not St. Louis alone, but the whole country, to put an end to every form of racism, In the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, I wish to make an appeal, an appeal to Catholics throughout the United States and wherever my voice of words may reach, especially to those who, for one reason or another, are separated from the practice of their faith. On the eve of the great jubilee, 
of the 2000th anniversary of the Incarnation. Christ is seeking you out and inviting you back to the community of faith. Is this not the moment for you to experience the joy of returning to the Father's house? Mary, Mother of Mercy, teach the people of St. Louis and of the United States to say yes to your son, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Virgin of Nazareth, 2,000 years ago, you brought into the world the incarnate world. Lead the men and women of the new millennium to the one who is the true light of the world. Amen. During the Eucharistic prayer, John Paul II uses the same chalice used by missionary Father Jean Sancom 300 years ago in 1698 when he celebrated the first Mass on the banks of the Mississippi River at St. Louis. He was betrayed. Celebration he of the bread. Eucharist unites the faithful with the heavenly liturgy, he brings us to a deeper bread. understanding of our baptismal David call, David and reminds David. us of God's promise of eternal life. Take this, all of you, and this is, this is my body, which will be given up for you. The Eucharistic prayer is the center and high point of the celebration. It is the prayer of thanksgiving and sanctification. At the Last Supper, on the night before Christ died, He commanded the apostles, Do this in memory of Me. At this consecration of the bread and wine, we truly believe they become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The prayerful procession of more than 100,000 communicants lasted 20 minutes.
when he first came in, um, you know, I think everybody gets a little choked up, and it's just so amazing to see this man that represents the church as a whole. Just the most emotional thing I've ever experienced, and I'm just so happy to be here. I've got all eight of my children here, and it's the best thing that's ever happened to them other than their baptism. So we're just so thrilled to be here. I was greatly moved. I was particularly moved by the spirit of fellowship and how he embraced everyone here in terms of addressing their personal concerns and their ecumenical concerns. I, I, I was greatly, greatly moved by this experience and it's something I shall never forget. It was just the best experience of my life. It was just wonderful. And I think it brought everybody closer together. It was, it was a beautiful, moving experience. It was um, something that we'll, we'll have for the rest of our life. I've never been to a papal mass and it's just amazing. Like. I just, oh, I've never been this close to the Holy Father. The Mass is ended, go in peace. The Papal Mass would challenge and edify the Catholic faithful. This Eucharistic celebration was the high point of Pope John Paul's pastoral visit to St. Louis. The day would conclude with an evening prayer service at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. More than 2,000 people of many faiths would join the Holy Father. At Vespers, the faithful recall the graces and blessings of the day with gratitude and songs of thanksgiving. Pope John Paul II, Christ's visible representative on earth, and all those gathered here to pray are united to God and his faithful people throughout the world. Throughout his papacy, Pope John Paul has encouraged interfaith and ecumenical dialogue. Here in the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis, Christians and non-Christians have joined him in prayer. Special word of thanks and appreciation is due to Archbishop Rigani, who just two days ago celebrated his fifth anniversary as your dedicated pastor. A few months ago, a pilgrimage from St. Louis came to Rome. We met on the, on the steps of St. Peter's, where they sang to me, Meet me in St. Louis.
with God's help, we have done it. I will always remember St. Louis. I will remember all of you. God bless St. Louis. God bless America. During the Holy Father's pastoral visit to St. Louis, he continued to speak out on the issue of capital punishment. Ironically, the execution of a Missouri prison inmate named Darrell Meese had been scheduled during the pontiff's visit. But because of the visit, officials had postponed the execution for a week. As the Vesper service concluded, Pope John Paul made a personal appeal to Missouri Governor Carnahan to commute the death penalty. Have mercy on Mr. Meese was what he would say to the governor. The next day, the governor would commute the death sentence to life in prison with no chance for parole. Pope John Paul urges Catholics around the world to follow the ancient religious tradition of Jubilee, a time of reconciliation and renewal. It is freedom and commitment to reaching out to social justice to ensure that the power of salvation may be shared by all. In preparation for the Jubilee year, Pope John Paul seals and blesses the doors of the Cathedral Basilica to be opened again on Christmas Eve, 1999. The Holy Doors welcome pilgrims to the Basilica and symbolize the spiritual abundance of divine favor and blessing. This pastoral visit of His Holiness, Pope John Paul II, was an historic event in the lives of Catholics throughout the Archdiocese of St. Louis and far beyond. This was his 85th trip outside Italy in his 20 years as Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church. It has been said that not since the 1904 World's Fair has one event so profoundly impacted the St. Louis community. In 32 short hours, Pope John Paul II the Vicar of Christ, had touched the deepest parts of the Catholic faithful. On the eve of the third millennium, Hundreds of thousands gathered in the Gateway City, hoping to see the man called El Papa, the Father. Always the teacher, always the evangelist, the Holy Father reminds us of the faith and courage of those first Catholic missionaries who celebrated Mass on the banks of the Mississippi River, not far from here. Shepherding his flock, John Paul touches the hearts of God's people in the most profound ways. He calls us to teach our children the fundamental values of human life, to be examples of openness and understanding in our homes and in the world, to reach out in humanitarian service and justice. His call for unity of the Americas reminds us we are one body, one people united in Jesus Christ. Rooted in faith, and strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, we move forward together, crying the gospel with our lives, following in the footsteps of Jesus, with this man, the Vicar of Christ, the successor of St. Peter, Pope John Paul II. It has just been so wonderful for families and to share it with the people that we love. It, it will be a memory we'll have for all of our lives. I mean, we'll never forget this. We'll talk about it forever.
love you because you have done so much for us and for the world. You know the truth of Jesus Christ. You know the love and the peace, the joy and the mercy of the Lord. And you never fail to share that message with the young people of the church. Because of the stand you have taken and your strong moral values, we are inspired to be virtuous Christian leaders that will impact our world for Christ. We have listened to your words, Holy Father, and we have been getting ready. We would like now to give you a sample of what we have been doing in response to the invitation you always give young people to follow Christ and be the light of the world. Show you the light of my mercy shining. 